Hey y'all, welcome to today's show. Continuing uh, with medicinal uses for uh, common garden vegetables and culinary herbs, let's get into um, a few other things that maybe should be growing in your garden right now. <laughs> and, uh, as usual, most people do not think of these vegetables as having medicinal properties, but the cucumber is actually a, a medicinal herb. I would call it a rather unlikely medicinal vegetable. Uh, I absolutely love uh, cucumbers. You know, I come from North Carolina, a state known for its cucumbers and Mount Olive pickles and all that. So, I mean, I, I grew up just eating pounds of cucumbers probably daily. I mean, this time of year, you know, I just walk out in the garden, grab a cucumber, fresh tomato, put a little salt and pepper on it, and just eat it right in the garden. You know, it's one of my favorite things to do. But the um, cucumber actually has medicinal use dating back to uh, at least ancient Egypt. Uh, British herbalist John Gerard wrote in the 1500s, All the cucumbers are of a cold temperature and moist. They putrefy soon in the stomach and yield unto the body a cold and moist nourishment, and that very little, and the same not good. He didn't like cucumbers, in other words. Uh, <laughs> he was quite wrong, actually. Cucumbers are actually quite nutritious. And um, somewhere I've got a great recipe for a cold cucumber soup uh, made with uh, milk and sour cream. It's very good, very good for a hot day. Put a few herbs in there, really nice. Um, but he did say of cucumber seed that it would open and cleanseth, this is Elizabethan English, remember, provoking urine, opening the stoppings of the liver, helpeth the chest and lungs that are inflamed, and being stamped and outwardly applied instead of a cleanser, it maketh the skin smooth and fair. And you may know that cucumber has a long use. You know, you've seen women in spas with cucumber slices over their eyes. Well, it pulls out um, inflammation. Cucumber has some diuretic and anti-inflammatory properties. Um, he said that cucumber taken in meat, he means cooked with meat, the English don't eat a lot of raw vegetables, uh, is good for the stomach and other parts troubled with heat. Um, the seed made into a milk, as they do with almonds, now that's an interesting concept, I never even thought about that before, um, or strained with sweet wine and drunk, looseth the belly gently and is excellent against exulceration of the bladder. So, um, it Good for your appetite, helps with constipation, and um, um, irritated bladder. So, uh, Fruit cut into pieces and chopped as herbs to a pot and boiled with a small pumpkin with a piece of mutton. That would actually be pretty good. Uh, being made into a pottage with oatmeal, as herb pottages are made, um, eaten uh, either at breakfast or dinner or supper. It means lunch or supper. Uh, taken in this manner for the space of three weeks without intermission, doth perfectly cure all matter, all manner of uh, copper faces and red shining fiery noses, as well as pimples, rubies, and such like precious faces. So this interesting stew of mutton and cucumbers um, and oatmeal, he believed would help with red faces. It's an odd use, okay, but uh, I mean, it's interesting, I think. We'll get into some more practical uses here in a second. Um, and he said, uh, bathe the face with uh, the juice of cucumber. Well, for obvious reasons we've already talked about. And um, he mixed uh, with um, wine vinegar and uh, camphor, uh, blanched almonds, apples, lots of lemons, Juices for lemons, a couple of other herbs, and um, sat it in the sun to steep, and then used that as a face uh, wash. He said it was very good for um, rather serious uh, skin conditions, uh, from uh, what they called morphew and spots to sunburns and all deformities of the face. So, you know, cucumber does have this long history of external use, but okay, in more modern times, let's look at what we'd actually use for it. Um, Plants for Future says the leaf juice is emetic. It is used to treat dyspepsia in children. Okay. 
So if you had uh, enough of the juice of the leaves of cucumbers, which is something I've never really even used, it will make you throw up. That's what an emetic means. It's like epikek. It's not a you know bad thing if you've eaten something and you need to get it out. Uh, but used to treat dyspepsia in children, dyspepsia is essentially indigestion, gas on the stomach, you know, that kind of thing. The fruit is depurative, diuretic, emollient, purgative, and resolvent. And depurative is just a, oh, we'll call it a fancy herbalist word, an old-fashioned fancy herbalist word for uh, what they used to call a, a blood cleanser. So cucumbers are thought to um, be a, a, basically a gentle tonic, which makes you healthy. And um, yeah, I believe that. Um, I absolutely love dill pickles. I, I make them fermented and I eat them every day. But when cucumbers are fresh in season, it's one of my favorite things. Uh, diuretic, of course, means it removes excess um, fluid. Uh, emollient means it makes the skin soft. Purgative means it can help with constipation. And resolvent, again, you're talking just like a general kind of tonic, essentially. Fresh fruit is used internally in the treatment of blemished skin, heat rash. And yes, cucumber has a long use for heat rash and overheating. You live in the hot south where I grew up and you know I live in the mountains now but I did grow up half the time in the coastal swamps and um, yeah I mean you, you have some old home remedies for dealing with heat because it's like 110 degrees uh, down there right now and um, you know if you were a kid you played baseball maybe you did some of these too like put a cabbage leaf under your hat it works well eating cold cucumbers is also really good for uh, heat exhaustion and heat stroke um, is, let's see, uh, and heat rashes, used externally as a poultice for burns, sores, and as a cosmetic for softening the skin. The seed is cooling, diuretic, tonic, and vermifuge, which means the seed will actually help get rid of intestinal parasites, worms, and such. The, um, and it's kind of interesting the way that's used. Used uh, 25 to 50 grams of ground dried seeds, including the outside coat of the seed, so you don't have to sift anything out. And, um, the, that would be the standard dose uh, as a vermifuge to get rid of worms, essentially, and needs to be followed by a purgative to expel the worms from the body. A decoction of the root is diuretic. So if you were using, um, you know, cucumber seeds to get rid of worms, which, you know, in a bad situation, you might need to do that. Um, you would take that and then follow it with essentially a strong laxative. So... Uh, cucumbers um, are annuals, of course. They need plenty of sun, heat, and water. They're vining plants that will spread around the ground or it can be trellised to save space. They grow very well among corn and uh, also like corn. There's so many varieties of, these, of uh, cucumbers. I like heirloom varieties. I prefer the small prickly uh, pickling varieties. So the the uh, more like old fashioned pickle variety taste I can get the better. Um, you know, they, they taste great. Those, those cucumbers to me taste better in a salad than a big like English cucumber or a hothouse cucumber or something. Those tend to be a little watery and bland to me. Um, not bad on a sandwich if you're having a sub or something, but if you really want the flavor of cucumbers, I like the small ones. And um, like I said, I, I even carry a salt and pepper shaker into the garden with me on a hot day. So I can just, you know, grab a cucumber or tomato. I'm happy. Maybe sometimes a little olive oil too. I like a little olive oil in there as well. Um... The small ones are lighter and easier to trellis, so if, if you need to trellis to save space, I would definitely uh, recommend the smaller ones. Just look for pickling cucumbers, whatever variety you like. Now, sometimes it can be very bitter. Uh, like one out of every hundred cucumbers you eat is going to be like so bitter you can't stand it. That's just, you know, that's a trait that hasn't been fully bred out of heirloom cucumbers. But, um, so I'm in the garden after the last frost. Remember, this is a hot weather. This is a plant that probably comes from somewhere around Egypt, Samaria, something like that originally. Um, even, I think it was, yeah, Jonah in, um, yeah, when Jonah went to Nineveh, you know, in the Bible. I remember he, he got all upset because he had planted a cucumber or a gourd plant of some kind and it died. And he, uh, I, well, it was giving him shade and it was going to be a good source of uh, cooling uh, refreshment and food on a hot day. So you can understand that. Um, you can plant uh, cucumbers like we discussed with corn. Uh, plant them every two weeks to extend your harvest so they don't all come in at once. Uh, they grow quickly, usually ripen within about six weeks. They need a fertile soil so use compost and mulch. Plant the seeds about an inch deep and a foot apart. And uh, cucumbers are pretty easy to grow. If you, they're really good to climb fences and such. I, I like them. 
Now, fennel is one uh, I love. I love fennel. I love fresh, well, I love celery and I love fennel. To me, fennel is like celery with a little licorice flavor, and that's just right up my alley, you know. You may uh, know fennel more for the seed. That's what uh, people use a lot more than fennel as a vegetable, but both have their, their, their uses. Fennel has that anise-like flavor, and it's what makes Italian sausage taste so good. I, um, I like a hot Italian sausage. I like to do fennel and tons of crushed red pepper. And I do make my own sausage, and it's just it's really fun to experiment. Usually I'll just use a pork butt. Don't usually have to add any extra fat. Sometimes I do a mix of pork and beef. Sometimes I do beef, but if I do beef, I have to add more fat. But uh, just grind it up, salt and pepper, uh, fennel seed, crushed red pepper, garlic, and some red wine. I don't add sugar to mine. Some people do. But um, just mix it together. You can add a few other herbs, you know, like marjoram is always very nice. Oregano can be very good. Uh, take a bit and fry it up, taste it, see if you get your seasoning right. And if it is, hey, you're good to go. I just uh, wrap it up in some parchment paper and stick it in the fridge. I don't bother doing casings or anything because, um, you know, when I make sausage, I just like to eat sausage every morning for breakfast or, oh, that's really good with an eggplant parmesan or a lasagna. Put a little of that hot Italian sausage in there. Fantastic. I like a lot of garlic and a lot of hot pepper. Well, um, fennel, as I said, is both a vegetable and a culinary herb. A uh, seed was also very uh, often used for... Um, for uh, flavoring medicine in, in earlier times. And it's really good for an upset stomach. Fennel and caraway seed are both very good. It's probably why they came into use. People, you know, used to season their meats because they couldn't refrigerate them, they'd spoil. And, you know, fennel helps settle a stomach. And when your stomach's really off, like you just cannot stop burping. That happens to me like every couple of years. Something weird will happen to my stomach. And I just burp and burp and burp and burp. I mean, it's just like, it's horrible. And, I mean, it'll keep me up at night. And, I, I mean, it, it's just uh, really uncomfortable. Fennel seed's very good. Uh, you take some fennel seeds and chew it. Uh, fennel infused in milk. Uh, very uh, common remedy for uh, colicky babies and such. Just, uh, you know, fennel and caraway. You can use those pretty much interchangeably. Um, one <laughs> little caveat, though... Uh, apparently very large um, amounts of fennel uh, can be slightly hallucinogenic. So be a little careful with it. I, I've never experienced any problem whatsoever. But they say that about a lot of herbs. And uh, yeah, I can tell you one that I, I chanced into by, by accident. That was nutmeg. That was one of the most miserable experiences of my entire life. Uh, apparently I am very allergic to nutmeg in large doses. Not only when I was, was I in an absolute stupor, but I had the worst migraine headache and my lungs were on fire. It almost killed me. Uh, so, you know, don't just think because something's sitting in your spice cabinet, it's not dangerous in large amounts. It can be. But anyway, you know, fennel's a flavor people either love or hate. You, you like your fennel in your Italian sausage or you don't. I mean, I do. But it uh, the seed has a natural sweetness. Um I really, like I said, enjoy it as a vegetable. I like it as a cooked vegetable. I like it raw in salads. Uh, fennel, the leaf of fennel is fantastic with baked fish. I mean, uh, fennel and dill, really the tops, those two, really good. Now, I will tell you, <laughs> some cultures combine fennel seed with cabbage. I do not like that. I do not like that at all. To me, that smells like a stinky bathroom and an air freshener. You know, when you go into a bathroom and someone's just done number two, and they sprayed some of that mess, that's what it smells like to me, and I cannot eat it. I absolutely cannot eat cabbage cooked with fennel seed. Now, cabbage sauerkraut with caraway seed, I can absolutely eat. I don't know what the difference is because they're kind of similar, but to me, that com combined smell of stinky cabbage and sweet fennel turns my stomach. Anyway... Uh, medicinally, fennel is an excellent digestive herb. As I mentioned, if I have an ingestion tonight, grab the fennel seeds. Dill works as well. Caraway works as well. There are a lot of these, these herbs that were traditionally combined with food for that reason. Officially, fennel is analgesic, means it helps with pain. Anti-inflammatory, antispasmodic, which is why it's you know really good for stomach cramping and hiccups and such as that. Aromatic, it eases gas pains. It's diuretic. It can bring on delayed menses, it's expectorant, and it increases mother's milk. Um, 
like I said, <laughs> uh, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, laxative, stimulant, and stomatic. It does help settle stomach. And yes, I did say hallucinogenic. I honestly, I have no idea how fennel is used in this way. I have not chanced into it. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not really sure it's true. Honestly, the old books say hallucinogenic. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, I had to put that caveat out there. I got to give you my disclaimer, my warning, you know. Fennel is also a urinary disinfectant, and it makes it really good for bladder infections and cystitis. So, especially if you have women in your life, keep some fennel around. Keep some dandelion root around, various things, that have, because cystitis can actually be uh, life-threatening if, if allowed to get out of control. I mean, um, you know, bl bladder infections, uh, usually not that big a deal, but cystitis can definitely be. Uh, so, um, you know, you can combine that with some, um, cranberry juice and, and you, you know, that's, that's a good home remedy. Uh, a lot of people find that useful. Uh, fennel is a biennial, uh, usually grown as an annual vegetable. So it will seed in the second year. Seed should be stratified over winter. So, so, uh, late fall or refrigerator put in the freezer for a couple months. Uh, it likes full sun. It's a Mediterranean herb, so it likes hot water and does not need a lot of watering. It's easier to grow than celery, actually, as long as you stratify that seed. It'll grow four to five feet tall if you allow it to um, grow to seed before harvesting. Better to harvest as a vegetable when smaller, of course. The flowers are yellow, and they form umbels, um, you know, like carrots and such do. And they're not showy. But the, the plant, is uh, the foliage is, is very fringy and soft, so it'll look good in, a, in an ornamental garden. I don't think anybody would look at it and think it was out of place. It makes a nice backdrop for showier, shorter flowers. Space the plants at least a foot apart, and um, like I said, you either love it or you hate it, and I really like fennel. Another one you either love or hate is horseradish. Um, horseradish is a potent medicinal herb, and it is so easy to grow. In fact, it can be spreading and rampant, almost like mint. It will take over your garden. We don't really eat a lot of horseradish greens in America, but it's actually a very popular uh, pot herb, as they call it in um, England and Germany and such. Very good. And um, I think if we looked at horseradish as a dual-use plant, well, tri-use, really, because you can eat the root as a condiment, you know, hot, spicy horseradish. Um, you can eat the greens as a mustard-type or uh, pot herb. They're very, very good. And um, the root is uh, medicinal. Uh, very packed with nutrition as well. And, you know, most Americans don't even consider a horseradish to be a vegetable. We just think of it as a condiment. Well, it, you know, it really is. Uh, horseradish is powerfully medicinal and nutritious. Uh, not surprisingly, horseradish has a long history in the use of, uh, of use in German folk medicine, especially among the Ashkenazi Jews throughout Poland and Russia. You know, you go to a Jewish deli, there's going to be some prepared horseradish. You, can, you know, and it's good stuff, too. I grew up on it. I actually... Um, well, in, in the mountains of North Carolina where I lived, there were a lot of Jewish folks there up there in the winter. I mean, the summer. And, man, I grew up on some seriously good uh, Jewish and um, and German and uh, Polish, uh, you know, cooking. Fantastic, actually. I mean, if, if I see a Jewish deli, I'm stopping. That I mean, those people know how to make a sandwich, let me tell you. Whew. <laughs> I mean, they will pile that meat on there and you get some good horseradish i'll tell you i'll just go ahead and tell you how to make the condiment uh prepared horseradish take a good root and grate it up and just combine it with a little salt and vinegar it's it's really that easy um my favorite dipping sauce is to do that and then combine it with some mayonnaise and a couple of dashes of uh worcester sauce and uh like when i do fried squash or fried green tomatoes fried mushrooms uh, chicken wings, I mean, I a lot of things I go and dip into that sauce. Really delicious, really good. If you're doing it for fish, though, I'd add a little dill as well. I think a little dill goes very well in there. Anyway, um, horseradish is useful against bacterial infections, both internally and externally. It aids and stimulates digestion. Horseradish is antiseptic, diuretic, and expectorant. That means it helps get the mucus out of your lungs. It helps with colds and fevers, hay fever, urinary infections, arthritis. It has anti-tumor properties and supports and supports immunity. Horseradish is one of the most potent of ancient medicinal plants. So, 
I mean, grow some horseradish. You're going to love it. And if you learn to eat the greens, you're not going to mind it really taking over, which it can do. Horseradish is perennial. So pick a spot where it can stay for a long time. It's usually grown from crowns. So you would want to buy the, the crown, the plants, not from seed. It just grows better that way. Dig holes about a foot deep and plant around a foot and a half apart. Plant the roots at about 45 degree angle. That, that seems to help them get established. Horseradish likes full sun to partial shade. Uh, where you find it wild, you usually find it growing um, like in hedgerows and such. Um, it's gotten out of old farms, you know, and it's up around the edge where someone isn't mowing all the way to the, to the, the end. And uh, really, I like horseradish a lot. Actually, it's making me hungry to think about it. Um, uh, see, water needs are moderate, especially with a good mulch. A good mulch will really help out. Uh, plant it in the fall to harvest it the next fall. It takes a year or so to mature. It's a slow grower. Harvest the roots after the frost is killed off the top for best flavor. And if you leave root sections in the soil or replant bits of roots, it'll regrow. So really easy to get it going. Uh, cold temperatures are really no problem for horseradish. I mean, it is it is seriously... I mean, you know, they grow it in Germany and the Alps and such. I mean, it's it's a hardy, hardy plant. I guess it's going to wrap it up um, for today's show. And uh, we'll continue this subject next week. Remember what Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And uh, you need a good diet of a lot of variety of fresh foods, fresh vegetables, and, and good, healthy free range organic meat which means hunt and fish and you know enjoy being a man and you're probably going to be a lot healthier and uh yeah it worked for my great grandparents they all lived to be around 100 years old and they ate a lot more variety than we get from the regular old grocery store these days so anyway y'all have a good one and i will talk to you next time the information in this podcast is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease or condition Nothing I say or write has been evaluated or approved by the FDA. I'm not a doctor. The U.S. government does not recognize the practice of herbal medicine, and there is no governing body regulating herbalists. Therefore, I'm really just a guy who studies herbs. I'm not offering any advice. I won't even claim that anything I write or say is accurate or true. I can tell you what herbs have been traditionally used for. I can tell you my own experience and if I believe in herbs help me. I cannot nor would I tell you to do the same. If you use an herb anyone recommends, you are treating yourself. You take full responsibility for your health. Humans are individuals and no two are identical. What works for me may not work for you. You may have an allergy, a sensitivity, an underlying condition that no one else even shares and you don't even know about. Be careful with your health. By continuing to listen to my podcast or read my blog, you agree to be responsible for yourself, do your own research, make your own choices, and not to blame me for anything ever. Thank you.